Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So before I get into this content, I want to encourage each and every one of you to donate $25 to my political campaign today. I'm running to be the next Baltimore City Councilman for District 4, and I'm running so that we can have a better, cleaner, and safer Baltimore. Again, I encourage you to donate. I will post a link in the description box so that you all can donate to the campaign and also visit the website for more information. I also encourage you to follow the campaign on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I will post that information in the description box as well. So let's get right into this commentary. And before I do that, I just have to thank everyone who's donated so far. I've had a few people on YouTube donate, and I truly appreciate you. Uh, I truly appreciate your support. I cannot thank you enough. Shout out to Lashiv for you. So let's go ahead. Um, the other day I saw Who Killed Malcolm X on Netflix. It's a powerful documentary. And what I'm going to do is just share some of my thoughts about the documentary and just do a quick review of this documentary. This documentary is powerful. You know, it fe features great commentators, you know, people like Mayor Raz Baraka, uh, Dr. Jelani Cobb, you know, both of those are brothers that I knew black back when I was at Howard University uh, as a member of the organization Black Neo Force back in the day. You know, those are some powerful brothers. They offer powerful statements in this documentary. Also, you have the brother Zach Kondo. You know, this brother um, did a book way back when I was at Howard that it was a, a guide for black student activists. And that book was very influential in my life. And it was required reading for the members of our organization. So shout out to that brother. And that brother has done documentaries on this subject before. And also there's another brother, you know, a Nation of Islam historian, the brother Lance Shabazz, who provides great commentary during this um, documentary. And the brother Lance Sabraz has done his own documentary on the assassination of Malcolm X. That's a documentary that my brother told me about. So far, I haven't had a chance to check it out, but I have seen Lance Shabazz's uh, videos here on YouTube. And shout out to him, you know, much respect to him. And I have to thank the brother who had the courage to actually um, do this documentary, to press ahead with this documentary. This documentary, uh, unlike a lot of the other films that I've seen about Malcolm X, they point out in this documentary how two of the people who were convicted for killing Malcolm X were not even um, responsible for the crime. You know, um, the actual assassin, you know, one of the actual assassins of Brother Malcolm X, you know, a confessed assassin, said that those two other brothers had nothing to do with the assassination of Malcolm X. And then this confessed assassin later on would reveal the names of those who helped him participate in the assassination of Malcolm X. And to this day, none of those other assassins have faced any charges for this heinous crime, this crime of killing, you know, one of the greatest black heroes that we have ever had in our history. Um, and, you know, these other two brothers were tarnished for life, like they were incarcerated. You know, one of them died in jail, you know, lived out most of his, all of his life, the rest of his life in jail um, for something he did not commit. Any person with a conscience should be outraged about that. Also, you had the other brother, you know, who was released from jail, you know, and because of his time in jail, like all of his relationships with his loved ones have been severed. His relationships with his children and grandchildren and great children forever destroyed because of this incarceration that he endured. So I just want to share some more thoughts about this whole thing, you know. Malcolm X built the nation. You know, the Nation of Islam, you know, Elijah Muhammad, for instance, um, just to, you know, elaborate, the brother Elijah Muhammad did save Malcolm. You know, Malcolm was a criminal. You know, he was somebody who committed all kinds of crimes. He took that criminal and fashioned him into one of the greatest leaders that we ever had in the black community. And for that, the black community 
has to have some respect for Elijah Muhammad. Not only did Elijah Muhammad produce a Malcolm X, he also produced a Khalid Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Ali, Farrakhan, and other great leaders in our community. So with that, you know, he deserves great respect. I mean, the Nation of Islam helped reform many people, many people who were gangsters, many people who were drug addicts and drug dealers. You know, many people who were thieves and prostitutes. The Nation of Islam cleaned them up and made them productive citizens. So for that, you know, I have respect for Elijah Muhammad, but I understand that he's just a man. You know, he's just a human being, just like anybody else. And one of the cautionary tales behind this whole thing, you know, it's just the whole cult of personality. You know, what happens when people worship other human beings, you know, place other human beings on a pedestal and give them a godlike status. When that happens, people no longer think for themselves. They become brainwashed. And they become fanatical in their views and they become willing to do anything to protect the cult leader. And that's what unfortunately happened here. You know, this man called himself a messenger of God, you know, and people viewed him as virtually divine. And when someone would criticize this person, you know, whether rightfully or wrongfully, his fanatical supporters were so outraged that some of them went as far as to kill this brother Malcolm X. Also, this, this whole documentary deals with the concept of greed and corruption within black leadership. You know, it talked about how uh, many people in Elijah Muhammad's family basically were getting wealthy off the Nation of Islam, were using it to, to pimp the people. No, no different from the same Christian pastors that many people in the Nation of Islam criticize. You know, the pastors like the Creflo Dollars and other mega pastors with these huge churches, you know, these prosperity pastors that pimp the people, that are the very um, 10 percent that the Nation of Islam talks about, like the bloodsuckers of the poor. You know, unfortunately, some of the people within Elijah Muhammad's circle had that mentality where they were exploiting the people and they actually feared the rise of a Malcolm X or, you know, they feared the possibility of Malcolm X succeeding Elijah Muhammad in leadership because they knew it was over for the corruption that that brother got in place. Um, and one thing that I found to be fascinating is like how, you know, these people who were fanatical Nation of Islam followers. You know, they they hated Malcolm when he embraced uh, Orthodox Islam or true Islam. They hated that brother for that. They hated him for speaking the truth about Elijah Muhammad not being a messenger of God. You know, they hated all that. But afterwards, they embraced true Islam. And I just find that to be ironic. And, and it's just... Uh, um, you know, it's just an unfortunate situation. Instead of appreciating the insight and the enlightenment of, that the brother Malcolm X discovered in true Islam, they attacked him because of that, but ended up embracing the very thing that he embraced, true Islam. Now, another thing that I have to address is, um, you know, just the FBI, the role of the FBI in this whole thing. There is a reason why the FBI did not. I mean, the FBI knew that some of the people that were actually convicted and in prison were not the killers. They had a this documentary points out how they had a full description of one of these killers that was contrary to the description of one of the people convicted. You know, they described this one brother as big, you know, dark skinned. Um, and, you know, the person that they actually convicted for shooting Malcolm with the shotgun was a light-skinned black man. So the FBI knew all along that they that the wrong person went to jail for killing Malcolm X, that two wrong people went to jail for killing Malcolm X. In the meantime, they protected, they virtually protected the actual killers of Malcolm X. And the question is why? Why did they protect them? What did they have to hide? What would those assassins tell or expose if they were arrested? And I believe 
that more likely than not, these assassins were informants for the FBI, care acting, you know, under the jurisdiction of the FBI or CIA. And that's the reason why, you know, the FBI did not reveal that those people were the actual killers. And the reason why the FBI knew they had informants in the room. They had informants in the Audubon uh, ballroom where Malcolm X was killed. Malcolm X's own private security guard was a FBI, was a police informant. And then there were also other, they said there was like nine informants. At least, if I recall correctly, they said there were like nine FBI informants in the room at the time. And the FBI had informants on Malcolm's side, and they also had informants in the Nation of Islam, and they used these informants to have these brothers and sisters clash with each other and destroy each other. And they want to uh, conceal that by not, you know, exposing who actually killed this brother. And, you know, that's a damn shame, man. And it's a shame that this brother, Malcolm X, spent his whole life, you know, most of his adult life building the Nation of Islam. Building it. You know, going all around the country, building mosques and schools and all that stuff around the country, spreading the word of the Nation of Islam. You know, the documentary talks about what many of us already know. Malcolm X was, you know, one of, a brilliant orator, far more skilled than Elijah Muhammad in spreading the word. It's far more skilled in spreading the message of Elijah Muhammad. Uh, so he helped build this nation. And then many people in the nation betrayed him. And, you know, while I know that the government played a role, we cannot ignore the role that many people in the nation of Islam played. You know, they talked about how there was a, a moment when Elijah Muhammad's son, Elijah Muhammad Jr., gave a speech to the FOI, basically encouraging violence against Malcolm X. We had a, a news, they had a newspaper. Mal um, Muhammad Speaks, Muhammad Speaks, that had cartoons in it um, calling Malcolm X a hypocrite and featuring him decapitated with horns on his head. All of that is designed to stoke violence. We can't ignore the role that the Nation of Islam played in killing one of our greatest leaders. You know, after all that loyalty, loyalty that this brother had, you know, people in the nation actually took him out. And this is a, a damn shame. You know, um, the brother Malcolm X, he made some mistakes as well in this whole thing. You know, but I understand why he did what he did. You know, here he was, a brother who built up the nation of Islam, helped the nation of Islam, had every reason to believe that the nation of Islam was there for him through everything. And then... After doing all that work for the nation, they try to take his home from him. They try to evict him from his own home. So I can understand how out of anger he would expose the hypocrisy within the nation, would expose the hypocrisy of Elijah Muhammad, you know, claiming to be a messenger of God, but not living a godly life. You know, while he was punishing, you know, members for committing adultery and fornication, Elijah Muhammad was participating in that which he condemned others for. And many people try to remix history, you know, like the Nation of Islam, they try to remix history and say that these teenage girls were his wives. If they were his wives, why didn't he tell the membership that was the case? Why didn't he have public... Uh, marriage ceremonies for these wives. Why would he expel these wives from the Nation of Islam, accusing them of committing fornication, if these were in fact his wives? Why would some of them be talking about suing him for child support if these were in fact his wives? This man was just like any man, just another human being. And, you know, they placed him in some godlike divine status that he, he wasn't entitled to. Um, and it's just unfortunate that you have some people that are so fanatical and so brainwashed that they would actually kill their brother um, to defend somebody that wasn't even a messenger, somebody that wasn't divine, somebody that was just another human being. 
So anyway, those are some of my thoughts about this documentary. Tell me what you think about it. Um, you know, I'm really interested in hearing from you. You know, I hope that the investigation, you know, according to some reports, I saw that they, you know, it said that they were going to reopen the investigation. Um, and I think that that's a good thing, even though um, the killers, many of them, if I'm not mistaken, have passed away. It's still important. It will expose the true role of the FBI and the CIA in the assassination of the brother Malcolm X. So anyway, tell me what you think. Please rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video, hit that notification bell. Uh, and also, again, please donate to my political campaign. Peace and blessings, everyone. Have a great day.